All right, hello, and welcome to the first ever podcast of Milk and Bourbon. I'm Nick, 30 years old, six foot tall, white male. Sounds like a rap sheet. Don't worry, it's probably just for public intoxication. What are you doing here? What am I doing here? What I can tell you is that I'm, I'm using this as a medium to force myself into being more productive. Not only being more productive, but also all that time that I spend on my phone, on Instagram, looking at stocks or, or receiving emails from Robin Hood Snacks and Motley Fool, looking at news, just general media, watching shows, what have you. All that drives information, and what happens with that information is up to me. And for the past 30 years, I've just let it become a vacuum. I get that information, and I keep it for myself. And what I see this podcast doing for me is forcing me not only to look deeper into why I have these preconceived notions of all these issues, sociopolitical, um, science, uh, eth ethics, anything of that matter, it'll force me, this podcast will force me to look into it, become more knowledgeable on the topic. And so that's what I'm trying to do here. I, I'm trying to make use of all this time that I spent spend and spent consuming these things and providing a product for you guys, the consumer. I chose to call this podcast Milk and Bourbon because at any time of day, it's probably one of those two drinks that I'm drinking with notable detours of coffee in, in the early a.m. and then tequila on a spicy night. <clears throat> For now, I'll expect that these podcasts might last between 20 and 30 minutes. As time goes on and I get feedback from you guys, I can hope that um, there'll be more. There'll be more time, there'll be more people on my show, what have you. Only time will tell. What can you expect from this podcast today and in the future? First and foremost, the, the focal point of every one of these, these podcasts is going to be a book. Um, I'll rate the book. I'll provide some feedback as to what I thought were good points within the book. Um, I'll provide some interesting themes and possibly try to tie them into my own life and see if that any, see if any of that, excuse me, see if any of that resonates with you guys. So for, for today, I'll, I'll give you a heads up. This is a bit of a palate cleanser. Um, I read 50-something odd books last year, and I realized that I wasn't really retaining it. So I've read somewhere that I think it's a learning model in the Army, or it might be somewhere else, that 10% of what you read is what you retain. Um, and it increases by orders of magnitude when you have to present it. And so I was, I was reading these books, 50 of them. Sure, that's cool, and the challenge was there, but what do I have to show for it? <clears throat> so this year, less books. I'll follow up by ranking these on, on a one-to-five basis, five being any book by Neil Stevenson, uh, my favorite sci-fi slash fantasy writer, on down to a one. Um, one book of note for that is uh, Leadership is an Art by Max Dupree. It's simply unreadable. Uh, I had a tough time finishing it, even though it was the shortest book I've read in 16 months. I'll follow that up with a, a science and tech section that's usually driven by my consumption of Reuters, BBC, New York Times, Wall Street Journal, um, Al Jazeera, really a bunch of different sources, Robin Hood Snacks, which I know they've got a bad rap right now, but they're not, they're not, they provide a good product. I'll tell you that much. Third in order, after I give you that science and tech rundown, uh, I'll talk about five stocks. I'll try to keep it to five stocks, but um, I'll give you some stocks that I'm looking at and some stocks to keep an eye on in the future. And then finally, the interactive piece. There's, there's something to be said about what's hanging up behind me. Um, I like bourbon. I like it a lot. And I want to share it with you guys. And I want you guys to share what you find with me. 
Um, today, I am cracking open a bourbon that my father got me for a recent promotion. I was saving it, and I figured there was no better time than my first ever podcast to break it open. <clears throat> it's called Blood Oath. If you want to start looking it up, it's, it's, I'm hoping it'll be great. The next thing I'll talk about um, in these podcasts is uh, a workout routine, a finisher, a smoker at the end of your workout that we can use as a challenge for each other. Um, and I'll try to vary it. I know that all of them are going to be time-based because I hate doing cardio. I hate it. And so something like this is just an avenue to improve myself because others are going to, it might be just my mom who's watching this podcast, but others are going to hold me accountable. And that's a theme actually in the book that I'm going to talk about today. And additionally in the future, I, I know it's just me today, but hopefully in the future I can convince some people, interesting people, or, or, or people that I, I love to hop on these things with me. Uh, for instance, I've already talked with a close friend, Dookie, Shrimp Dick, Adam. I look forward to um, playing Catan and um, doing a double blind test of cheap beers to provide feedback for the masses. We'll solve this. I don't think it's going to be PBR. That's, that's my prediction. On to the book. <clears throat> I hate book jackets, so you're never going to see these book jackets, and I'm sorry. Um, but I just can't stand them. But this book, <laughs> I know it's backwards. The Gucci Mane Guide to Greatness. And at first glance, you might think, what the hell am I going to do with advice from Gucci Mane? And I thought initially the same thing. And I realized Dad joke incoming, you can't always judge a book by its cover. I read into how he turned his life around, and that impressed me, and it resonated with me, so I read into it. And here's some key points that I take away from this book. Right off the bat, he hits you with some shit. Uh, <laughs> he says, don't think that what you're saying is not important. Just a one-liner. Don't think that what you say is not important. And I'll tell you that I struggle with that even as I was creating this podcast. I, I had a tough time really thinking to myself, what do I have to offer to people that they, they can't consume anywhere else? I'm not an expert at any one thing. And I realized that I just have a lot of interests. I have a lot of interests, and I think that they can be They can be, they can serve as a point for you guys to um, have some resonation of your own. And I mean, I'm just an average guy, you know, and I think that people will be able to identify with me on some of these points that I draw. The second point Gucci Mane makes is time is valuable, spend it wisely. He goes on to say that he's doing, and by doing, um, the book writing, the prolific song production. Um, he's doing it because I like to do it, and I feel like I'm good at it. And I've read in multiple places that where you find your purpose in life is where your passion and your talent meet. And there's no way around it. If you're talented at something but you're not passionate about it, you're never going to see your full potential. And if you're passionate about something and you're not talented at it, I think I said that the right way, vice versa you're not going to be good at it. You may love it. I loved playing basketball. I wasn't good at it. Point number three, how you do one thing is how you do everything. This probably resonated with me most. It was, it struck me because I identified with it. And I thought back to my early 20s and I can tell you that there was a lot of lackluster performance in 20 to 25 year old Nick. Uh, nothing inspiring really happened. I drank too much and um, I chased after girls too much, you know, typical 20 to 25, but I, I don't want to be your typical person. I started to do everything the way I did one thing, my best. I always try to do my best. 
and even on menial tasks. Because I can tell you that someone's always watching you. Someone is always watching you, and they're always gathering information about you, and humans naturally make snap judgments. So your first impression, first 30 seconds, like they've already decided if they like you or they don't. That's been found in studies. I'm not even just making that up, although there will be times that I do make stuff up. But I can tell you that I, I want my legacy to be manifested in everything that I do. I never want to do anything half-assed anymore because I always, I always want to get better. Every day is either a plus or a minus. That was also in his book. Every day is either a plus or a minus. You're not maintaining ever. Even if it's infinitesimally small, you're either getting better every day or you're getting worse. Self-awareness is a valuable weapon. Sun Tzu said, know yourself, know thy enemy, in 1521. And yet, 600 years later, we'll, we're still discovering that self-awareness is important, is vital. Know what you're good at. Know how you fit in. Know what you can provide for others. And know when you, when you need help. Which leads me kind of to my next point. Avoid lazy and miserable people. Where you fall short, those others should be able to pick you up. I read somewhere that the five people that you surround yourself with, you're the sum of those five people. Assess your five people. Who are your five people? And determine if they're making you better or they're making you worse. Point number six. If you're strong within, you won't look for validation from the outside world. That was the second most resonating point for me because I can tell you when I was younger that I required validation from outside sources. I'm ashamed to admit it. But yeah, as I've grown older, I've realized that the only person that needs to validate me is me. And the only person that needs to love me is me. Of course, we are very social beings, and I am always going to require that at least one other person loves me. Thanks, Mom. But I have to love myself first. And I felt that. I felt like younger me, and I'm, I'm starting to discover that younger me didn't really like me. I don't really like him. Hence why I'm doing stuff like this. Point number seven, nobody cares, work harder. That actually wasn't Gucci Mane's quote. He quoted Lamar Jackson from a couple years ago, one or two years ago in a post-game interview. Lamar Jackson said, nobody cares, work harder. Nobody cares about your accomplishment. Nobody. I'm telling you. Maybe mom. Like I said, mom, love you. You're the best. But nobody really cares about your accomplishments. They're always wanting to see more from you, or they just don't care. So you should always want to see more from yourself. That's just how, it, it's, how it's done. It's the only way to get better is to know that you're only getting better for yourself or for your loved ones. My final point, because I know I'm starting to drive the point home and maybe belaboring it a little bit, I'm going to read this, this stat directly off this sheet. Gucci's hometown of Bessemer, Alabama, was named the worst Alabama, Alabama city to live in by Wall Street 24-7. Average household income for Bessemer, Alabama was $31,000 in 2019. The crime rate in Bessemer, Alabama was five times the state average something like 24,000 per 100,000 people. It's violent. And yet, and yet Gucci Mane makes it out of that. Not only does he make it out of it, but he makes it out of prison, I think twice. And now look where he's at. He's driving Bentleys with a beautiful woman that he's engaged to, and he's the fittest he's ever been at 40, or 40, he's in his 40s. He's the fittest he's ever been. You should look up pictures, and if I don't post them, you should definitely look up pictures of Gucci Mane before his incarceration and Gucci Mane after. It's disgusting. Shocking. You love to see it. I love to see it. I love to see that people can turn their lives around. I love to see that people can change because it means that I can do things like that. It's validating. I love the book. I give it a three out of five stars. <laughs> I, I reserve five stars almost purely for fantasy and sci-fi. 
Um, four stars are for the truly changing, mind-altering type books. Three is a solid book. Three stars is a solid book. It's a worthy buy. Under three, that's when you need to start worrying if you're wasting your money or not. And that's what I'm here to provide. <clears throat> On to science or tech, but in today, it's, it's kind of both. And it's some interesting stuff. It, so in its seventh operation of its kind, we've landed a rover on Mars as of two days ago, three days ago, on the 16th. We landed the rover, the Mars rover Perseverance. And if I can, I'll put up a sel the selfie that it took as it descended. It's pretty iconic. And yeah, what this, what this rover is trying to do is it's trying to look for signs of microbial life in what used to be a water basin on, I think it's a, the Jezera mountain range, something like that. And scientists are actually hoping to see even more than just simple microbial life. And we'll see what they, what they can turn up. But what's, what's important? Why is this, um, why do we care? Well, this is a part of a larger scheme to put, it's underneath the Artemis program. It's a part of a larger scheme to put man on the moon again in 2024 and to have to continuous presence by 2028 which I think is amazing that in eight years we can establish something like continuous presence. Now, I don't know in what capacity they plan on doing that, maybe low, low orbit type international space station kind of thing. Um, I don't think we're ready or have the capability to actually inhabit the planet, or sorry, the moon. But it's interesting either way, and hopefully they can accomplish that timeline. But this still doesn't really answer your question, why do I care? Well, they're able to do a couple of things on, on the moon that they wouldn't be able to essentially do here on Earth because of our atmosphere. Um, they, came to, they can collect much better data of what the sun's doing. Why is that important, you might ask? And to that, I answer a little vignette. Um, solar flare, flares happen. Solar flares definitely happen, and they can definitely affect us. In 1989, there was a solar flare that knocked out, knocked out, out I'm starting to sound like I'm Canadian, knocked out the entire power grid for Canada. Um, coronal mass ejections are clouds of electrified, magnified gas that weigh billions of tons and move through space at 1,250 miles per second. That's scary, right? What can the moon do for us? What can Mars do for us? Um, against that is predictive models. Uh, we can collect better data as far as what's happening with the sun, and we can kind of predict better when those types of things happen. And they happen frequently. Uh, in 2001, there was another huge, um, huge coronal mass inject. Uh, sorry, coronal mass ejection, and if it would have hit Earth, it would have been devastating. But it, thankfully, it was directed away. <laughs> Additionally, with that that time spent on the moon and on Mars, we can perform, we can perform experimental science on the moon that we wouldn't be able to do here on Earth, uh, whether it's too dangerous or um, the atmospherics of Earth interfere with that test. Either way, it's, it's, a, it's a way we can further science on another celestial body. And finally, I think what they're trying to do is establish the moon as kind of like what the International Space Station is for us today, and that's the ability to jump off from there, resource, refuel, whatever, whatever programs we got going out further than that. <clears throat> That's about that as far as science goes. Mars is getting inhabited. It's happening. Now on to my stocks. I'm going to try to keep it to five, but I know already based off of what I've thought about that there's going to be more. My first stock is just a good old heavy hitter. It's that hitter, Triple M. Its P and E is low. Price over earnings is a is a key contributor to how I decide to purchase things. If it's lower, it's better. It's under twenty, or was under twenty as of Friday. And it's got its hand in everything, man. If it's in if it's in your house and it's or it's in your business, Triple M's got a hand on it. Um, if it's on your face, the mess that you're probably wearing. They're probably made at Triple M. 
They have high demand. They're not going away. They're one of those heavy hitters. They're a dividend stock. Um, they're a little bit of a stagnation right now. Um, I'm continuing to buy, doing my cost-based averaging. But Triple M's a good stock to have, man. Next is three clean energy stocks. Jinko Solar, JKS, Reggie, R-E-G-I, and Plug, P-L-U-G. All clean energy companies all experienced a dip recently. Um, some of them, I think, uh, a pretty hefty dip. Plug to be uh, plug to be specific. And now's the time to buy them. I think um, I would look into those and I would keep a keep a pulse on those three clean energy stocks. And here's where you can pick your own poison. If if you don't know already, Apple is actively seeking to enter the electric vehicle market, but they don't want to start from scratch. They're trying to partner with a vehicle maker. So I can tell you that Nissan, Hyundai, and one other. Nissan, Hyundai. Kia. Nissan, Hyundai, and Kia have all already been eliminated um, after some brief talks, or no talks at all. They've just been eliminated for the hell of it. What I think can happen, GMC is already starting to work on one. I think that that could be a train that Apple tries to hop on. I think Volkswagen is an amazing company, creates amazing product. I think they are also um, capable of, of housing that Apple electric vehicle. So VWAGY, VWAGY, and GMC are something to look at. And the next are, are kind of a pick your own poison, um, or, or both. Caterpillar, I love. It's the construction vehicles, typically, that they create. Um, beautiful company, dividend stock as well, uh, constantly growing. I think is a good stock to, to base your stock portfolio on to provide that base. Uh, and then Beyond. Beyond Meat is a product that I believe in. I think that it's, it's something that is going to gain traction as we become more aware of the resources we commit to making um, vegetable products versus animal products. Uh, if you haven't read about that kind of stuff, it's crazy. I think somewhere there was a model that said um, it requires 14 times the resources to create a pound of beef as it does a pound of vegetables. And for you red-blooded Americans, I'm sure you're just crying on the inside that I said that, but the more you know. Now we're moving on to bourbon, my favorite part. I actually haven't even cracked it yet. Um, like I said, Blood Oath Pact 4. It's a beautiful, it's a beautiful product. It's, I mean... It's got its own box. That's how you know it's legit. I think my father said it was like two fifty. Um, and what I'm gonna do, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna read direct to you what the distiller says. The distiller says Pact Four is a masterful union of three well-bred bourbons. The first, an extra-aged twelve-year-old bourbon. The second, a rich ten-year-old bourbon. And the third, a nine-year-old bourbon finished in toasted barrels. Tasting notes of note. For aroma, you're going to get that caramel and that strong oak on the front end, backed up with some rich vanilla and chocolate. For the palate, some rich caramel, honey and spicy oak comes up front, and it's followed with that smooth vanilla and warm chocolate undertones. And for a finish, a robust spice followed by ultra-smooth finish with lasting caramel, vanilla, and oak. Let's give it a shot. Cheers to all you lovely people. I want to thank you for watching. It means a lot to me. We're almost done here, so bear with me. Let me, let me give you a little reaction to this. Oh, you definitely get the oak. Holy cow. It's a smooth drink, though. It's smooth. I thought it was going to kick my ass. It's a 98 proof, um, so barely over the required amount. So I knew it wasn't going to like burn for forever, but I thought it was going to kick up front. 
it's a smooth, smooth, smooth finish. Um, smooth up front too. But you get a you get a strong oak. I'm I'm not much of an oak guy, but I think they balance it out pretty nicely with the caramel and the vanilla. <clears throat> if I had to give that one stars, this is on the spot. I hadn't even thought about this before. I'd give it a three, three out of five, three out of five. And now that I've tasted that bourbon for the first time of the day, I'm feeling a little good already. That first one always kicks a little extra, I think. It makes me want to try some more. My dad always said the second one goes down smooth, always. He wasn't lying. <clears throat> it's a good drink. Anyways, back to exercise. Back to exercise, people. We're focused here. We're trying to do five rounds as fast as possible of 15 calorie resistance bike, then 15 push-ups, then eight pull-ups. And you're doing that as fast as possible. The first time I did it, I got a 1330. Second time at 1325. I'd been drinking the night prior. And then today, knowing that I'd have to tell you guys what I got, I got an 1157, a little bit more motivation. And this completes the show, guys. Uh, I stayed almost right on time. I, I said 20 to 30, and here I am at 30. For this next month, we're going to be looking at 2030 by Mauro Guillen. 2030 by Mauro Guillen. I've already started reading it, and I'm telling you it's an interesting book already. And uh, if you want to join me, just hit me up. We can talk about it throughout the process. I'd love to hear from you guys. And if there's anything about the show you want to see or didn't like, please let me know there. Milk and Bourbon, M-I-L-K-N, Bourbon, on Instagram. I'd love to hear from you guys. Thanks for watching. Yeah.